Yeah, I, let me just start. I, I uh, was the asked to be the youth director at St. Spiridon. <laughs> And I had been in San Diego, I don't think more than six months or so. And the uh, parish priest was looking for somebody to kind of take, take charge of the young people, young adults. And uh, as I began to get to know them and to meet with them, uh, one of our biggest challenges was that we were the only Orthodox church within about 150 mm -hmm. miles. And so our kids in San Diego really didn't have any interchange with any other kids mm -hmm. of the Greek Orthodox faith. Where in the Los Angeles, the greater Los Angeles area, there were members of Orthodox churches and they had basketball and volleyball tournaments that so kids were getting together and they had their socials. So for our kids, they, they really just didn't have anybody to connect with. And looking for projects, uh, the first project that came really came up was we had just recently started when I got there, maybe four or five years before I got to San Diego, a food festival. And Don and Ellie would be involved in that. They would volunteer their services. And uh, the community, in order to give a Greek flavor to it besides the food, would invite uh, a dance group from L.A., the Intersection Dancers, mm -hmm. or from Oakland community that had a group of dancers to come down and dance at our festival, and they would get paid. Well, our our young adults one day came to me and said, you know, why can't we do this? Why, why, why do we have to pay outsiders to come? And, uh, and I didn't realize that our kids at that point were really into dancing. And I mm -hmm. began to ask questions. And they said, well, you know, there's this couple, Don and Ellie Hyatt, that every Friday night have dance classes in the, in the church hall. I said, they do? <laughs> and I said, well, Hyatt, that doesn't sound they great. They really must have cut it short. <laughs> So, so uh, that led us to start thinking about how could we get our kids mixed in with others. And so the idea of, of a folk dance competition, well, I, had a fit, uh, I didn't realize I was going to hit a buzzsaw when I said competition because there yeah. was a lot of our, our Nobody believed kids, in competition. Yeah, a lot of our kids said, no, I, I, I only dance for, for my heart, you know, with my heart competition. Well, why? I'm not, not going to do it. <laughs> so we finally persuaded them that let's give this a try. And um, even the hardcore disbelievers actually came into the fold and, mm -hmm. and made their own major contributions. And uh, I, I can talk about that a little later, but the, the biggest contribution uh, was the introduction of two kinds of forms of Greek dance. One was from the island of Cyprus, mm -hmm. and the other was from the region of Pontos. Island of Crete. Island of... Uh, not Cyprus. Not Cyprus? Crete. Crete, okay. And uh, so they... Um, so those were dances that were really... They, the older kids really, mm -hmm. really developed. But the unique one was the area of Pontos. Our people mm -hmm. just had not seen those kinds of dances. Well, those were dances that originated in Turkey. And then they brought over to the Greeks and yep. had run very big community in the Thessaloniki. Yes. Uh, yeah, and very good, strong dances. Boys loved them, mm -hmm. you know, so. And had you been to Turkey before? Oh, yeah, this? yeah, Turkey and, and uh, Greece. And so you were familiar with oh, the yes. dances from? Yeah, right, wow. yeah. So that's how Don and Ellie and I met. I mean, the kids brought the, yeah. the three of us together. Uh, then when I presented the concept, one thing about Don and Ellie, they're very positive thinkers. You never hear the word no, or it can't be done. They just play along and say, let's see, let's see. And I'm sure when they looked at me, they said, let's see where this yeah. madman's going, okay? <laughs> so we'll see just how far he goes down this path. But if it wasn't for well, Don he, and Ellie. If, if we were going to sink, you were going to sink too. So. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. So, but if it wasn't for Don and Ellie, we, we would have, I would have never known some of these people and our mm -hmm. kids oh, yeah. that were really interested in learning to dance through Don and Ellie as the kids progressed mm -hmm. and wanted to learn more. Don and Ellie introduced them to people like Joe Graziosa mm -hmm. and John Lilius and Mary Chorus and, and others like them who would come out to California. Yeah. They'd come out to give workshops for us and, you know, just, it was just wonderful. Uh, the, uh, the, 
they could produce maybe uh, six good dances when they came out and they just, you know, everybody was doing them within a few months because they were so interested in the dances from the different villages and areas that, you know, when we first started dancing, there was a, a very few dances we did, uh, you know, because we just weren't uh, subjected to them. Yeah, we just and, didn't know. Uh, we didn't know the the, no. the, the variety and, and the, the plethora of dances. And the more teachers we had come in, and, and then and then the young children started going to Greece during their summer vacations and re doing a lot of research, bringing back. We have thousands and thousands of Greek dances now, and you know. I hope that somebody is rec uh, recording all the dances and the uh, instructions uh, well, at this uh, point. I was going to ask you about that because well, I think it's very important. I don't important. know what they're doing currently, yeah. but, but up to the time that I left, mm -hmm. you know, we, we right. really re-recorded re everything. Good. And what I did mm -hmm. after I left, I took the last 10 years of videotapes. Yeah and I converted them to CDs. I made mm -hmm. two sets, and I send one entire 10-year set yeah. to FDF, the current management. Yes. Mm -hmm. I said, here you are for your archives. Sure. And, and I, of course, I have that set, plus mm -hmm. I have all the tapes way before that. Sure. Mm -hmm. So parts of those and the editing of this entire documentary, Ellie, is, is we're going to uh, take uh, snippets from different periods mm -hmm of the 30 odd sure, years that we were yes. involved in. There's so much uh, And it, it'll show the evolution because it was significant. Yeah. I mean, when we first started, mm -hmm. we had, there were three rounds of dancing required. Well, three rounds of dancing and everybody, every group had to do the same dances. What, four or five? We had maybe four or five dances. Every group had to do the same five dances. Right. Well, that was pretty monotonous. After a while. <laughs> and not only monotonous, after a while, they got pretty good at it. And we said, oh, yeah. this is silly. Yeah. They've already proven they yeah, can do, they've the, proven the, they can they do can all the four dances. basic dances. Yeah. <laughs> and so. so then they had to research and, and bring their own dances yeah. in. And, you know. and when you say they had to research, where, and you also mentioned the instructions for the dances? Were oh, written they have to be dances? very well written. Oh, yes. Okay. Oh yes. And where are where would you find those? Say back then before the internet. Well, uh, you know, when when the instructors came and gave a symposium or workshop, they always handed out all the instructions, and then they go over just how those steps are supposed to be done. And from all the villages, there's there is a vast amount of difference in the you know the steps and. And then how did how did you learn as the the judge coordinator, you had to know all of those. Well, I didn't have to know all the dances, you know. I mean, we, we couldn't possibly after, no. you know, uh, I knew a lot of dances and I, I was a very avid folk dancer all this time. And, uh, but I had, they, they had, they've gone so far beyond what we ever knew of these kids and, you know, in their research, they're very dedicated to this. And, uh, yeah. They go, and they write good notes and, and you know, if, if another group receives uh, instructions from somebody else, they, they can pretty well put it together like it should be. So. One of the things we really tried to achieve um, from the very beginning was that groups share. And, and what yeah. was from the get-go, oh, yeah. you would see, oh, yeah. uh, even though they're mm -hmm. competing, you would literally see kids practicing in the halls and another team helping Oh, them. yeah, yeah. So it wasn't, sure. you know, I'm gonna keep it to myself, uh -huh. but I'm sharing. And that was one of the things we tried to impart from the very beginning, okay. is to share. And then you'd see kids, as, as what happened, they, they're packing to come to FDF and they forgot something, okay? And you'd see another team say, hey, you can borrow, <laughs> you can borrow my scarf or my vest or whatever. <laughs> so, uh, uh, so th that was the way it really grew. I mean, the yeah. sharing was, was amazing. Mm -hmm. And of course, we, we then wanted to stimulate that educational process, and we offered scholarships to Greece. Yeah, every summer, a uh, couple of kids would go over. So, and yeah. and the, the requirement of those that received the scholarship yeah. had a videotape, the dances they saw, sure. and to and bring it back. Bring back the notes. All notes and share it with everybody yeah. else. So when they came back, did they actually like do some instruction? Yep, some of them did. Oh, uh, yeah, sure. Yep. Yeah. I'm, I'm interested in how you um, 
recruited judges or identified people who were qualified to judge? Oh. Well, uh, when we first started, our judges were other dancers that had da were dancing with us, actually. And that's how we started. We didn't have any, uh, you know, uh, professional people at all. And then uh, we would invite, you know, we didn't have many judges at first, what, two yeah. or three maybe? Yeah. That may now it's, I don't know how good, great it's gone, but when I was there, it, ended, it was about maybe Six eight, or eight or yeah, eight. seven or eight. Yeah, seven yeah. judges, yeah. Uh, you know, and as these people across the country who were professional Greek dancers uh, would come and, and work, give us workshops, and uh, a lot of them after they came once, they wanted to come every year. We have some that I was going over the list of the dancers when I was there, and you know, it's 14 years later. Some of them have been there over 30 years, yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, George, um, George Nichols. Oh yeah, uh, he's saying yeah. he's retiring after, Is he after really? next year. Oh, <laughs> so yeah. and he's been yeah. he's been there probably a good twenty five. Oh sure, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. and so yeah. and we're now seeing the uh, uh, kids that were dancing and then became instructors. That was another oh, thing. Yeah. You saw kids who sure. danced and then yeah. went yeah. into becoming directors, and yeah. now we're seeing some of those who've now yeah. are become being asked to be judges. Yeah. So it's it's come full yeah. circle. That uh, whole idea of, of fellowship was that something that I, I don't think you a hundred percent saw it early on, but yeah. when did you start to recognize that this was really? Well, I really think oh, I think as we got closer to the to the second or third year, probably the third. Yeah, year, when we started to really know what we were hopefully doing. what we would we were doing. Try, or trying to accomplish, you know, yeah. and, uh, uh, and and what happened is you you I think. You're right. It's not something we thought of, but what we mm -hmm. did see, is, and we tried to nip it in the bud, is we didn't want extreme competition. In other words, I'm, oh, here, no, no. I'm here to really no. smoke you. We didn't want that. No. And so w we really began to say, hey, this is a learning process. And if you read the, um, the introduction to our bylaws, mm -hmm. uh, it says it all in that that the fact that I won a medal isn't because I'm better than anybody else. Mm -hmm. It's a recognition by your fellow competitors that you just did a really great job. Yeah. And, and mm -hmm. it, that's a, a very simplistic response as to what that says, but it's really worth reading because it mm -hmm. does really set the tone mm -hmm. of what this competition is about. There was a, a letter, I have it, I think in my briefcase, and a newsletter that you and your husband wrote mm -hmm. about judging, and it, it sounded uh, a bit like maybe people didn't understand the judging. Or... Well, I, I was going quickly through the Oli Muzzy, mm -hmm. you know, papers last night, and Don read, uh, wrote, oh, at least three, maybe four articles yes. about judging mm -hmm. every year in that, and uh, you know, trying to explain it. Yeah. So. The, you know, judging in anything is not a precise science. No. And there's no question. It's a, you're, you're, it's an emotional reaction. Mm -hmm. uh, the, if if a judge, let's say, had a bias towards a particular region of Greece or an island uh -huh. of Greece, uh, that was their favorite kind of dancing. Well, when they saw that being performed, the likelihood is they're going to be a little bit more critical sure. if they didn't like yeah. the way it was yeah. performed. But I think the other judges yeah. uh, knew this, yeah. you know, and tried to balance. Absolutely. You know, if they thought this guy was going to do a little bit heavier, they would probably try to balance yeah. it off because they wanted, didn't want it to end up in, you know. Did you discuss your scores with each other? Oh, absolutely. We had big sessions on scores every day, practically. Don and Nellie's oh, yeah. contribution yeah. to... Uh, educating the judges yeah. because their role I mean they met every day with the judges well we were there constantly we, yeah. we saw that they got fed we got saw, any problems they had we took care of them and right. that, uh, that was our job and, <laughs> and, they were our babies and they <laughs> yeah and 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 then yeah. being in the meetings and being yeah. the mediator yeah. you know and and again impl imparting to the judges that hey mm -hmm. It's not just judging for the sake of finding a winner, it's judging yeah. to also educate. Mm -hmm. I think we actually felt we knew enough about dancing to 
to get in on the, their yeah. sessions and you know work with them. So. Yeah. Yeah. How did you have time? I've I've asked Peter this mm -hmm. question with raising a family and. Uh well, you know when all this happened, my kids were all grown. They uh, the last oh. the boys were in college when we moved to San Diego, and my daughter was married, and. We had no kids, and we went to Europe one year, and I left my little poodle with uh, my mother, and I never got him back, so it was just us. <laughs> <laughs> we had to do something. <laughs> so the timing of it was perfect, yeah. okay. <laughs> well, we came to San Diego. You know, the first thing we did was look for folk dance places to get into, and of course, I, I thought of the Greek church, you know. So we went down there, oh, I bet we weren't in town more than a couple of months. And uh, uh, Betty and Jerry Gear Eyes. Oh my gosh, I haven't heard they were that about, Well, they were about ready to leave. They weren't going to teach anymore. And they I said, What do you want to teach here? You don't want to, t you know? So we just, that's, we, we just sort of blundered in on the whole thing. And uh, we got started, and there was about 10 people at that, that the night we went there. But it grew into 100, 150 people every every Friday night in that uh, big auditorium. Oh, that many yeah, adults and children. Oh, adults, kids. Well, oh, yeah, everybody yeah, was everybody. welcome there. Yeah. And from anywhere, it was. It was just well, Greek. outside. Oh, a lot of outsiders. Yeah. Oh gosh, we had a lot of non-Greeks. So it wasn't really a ministry at that point. It well, was more of a, yeah, their, it was their ministry, but <laughs> right. yeah, it wasn't a church ministry at the, the time. Father no. The father there wasn't exactly happy about no. it. I don't think no. he didn't think that dancing was all that good, you know. And we tried to convince him, you know, the dancing brings the kids into church. It makes them, you know, and, and it's the truth. A lot of these people are up in the church, you know, uh, quite quite involved. Quite, yeah. yeah. No, never would have done it otherwise, well, yeah. probably. But they were hanging around the church all the time, then dancing. <laughs> so I think it, I think it was actually a very good idea. You know, yeah. Ellie's comment reminds me. Uh, we used to do a, a in the early years. We used to have a um, a workshop where we brought all the dancers together, mm -hmm. and we would bring in a. Um, a, a a, a really an inspiring kind of a speaker. Yeah. And one one of the years, in fact, we were at what is now called Prince's uh, Village. What, what, what was that called? Vacation Village. Oh, vac Village. Vacation Village. I think it's yeah. now called Prince's Village in San Diego. Yeah. Um, and uh, anyway, we brought this, um, we were looking for it, and one of the kids on the management team suggested maybe Billy Graham. Would we could get mm -hmm. Billy Graham? So, you know, so well, you know, write and find out. Well, he, obviously the man was not able to come, but he sent uh, a young man who was at that time involved with his uh, uh, Christ or, uh, uh, Christ for Campus Ministries or something mm -hmm. of that order. He came, this was the third or fourth year of FDF, and at that time we had our brand new bishop, who uh, Bishop Anthony, who you've heard me talk about. Uh, he spoke, and the kids were just enthralled with this man uh, and his commentary. So he's not so over with. He's leaving, walking down from the main meeting room where the kids were and where he spoke, and here comes Bishop Anthony. And he goes right up to Bishop Anthony, and he says to him, he says, I hope you Greeks appreciate what you have here. This, he says, I wish I had, this is a direct quote, I wish I had this mousetrap. Wow. That change, if, if Bishop Anthony was not sure whether this was a program he really wanted to embrace or not, that single moment coming from this stranger who was also a religious figure literally changed Anthony's perception of the value of the program. Mm -hmm. And from that day forward, he, he was, was our champion. He was just yeah, great. He was our champion. So you had a close, obviously, close Oh, sure. Oh, yeah. We were invited to San Francisco and to, was it Palm Desert or Palm oh, yeah. Springs? His house, his, oh, yeah. Indian Wells. <laughs> Indian yeah. Wells. Whatever. Indian Wells. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that was, oh, that yeah. was uh, uh, yeah. yeah. And so. did you continue to travel during, were you? Oh, yeah. I, 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 we, we set up two or three t trips a year. I was traveling all the time. The only, the only folk, uh, uh, 10th anniversary. FDF 
we ever missed was the year I was in India. India. Yeah. We were in India. And yeah. you met, that was the most exciting. Yeah, and the, that was the year they gave me some kind of, uh, gave us some kind of an award, did. and my son went down and, <laughs> and, yes. takes, and t took it we, for us. They gave her so. the, uh, we, uh, yeah. we, we, we what gave that. the award for you and, and yeah. Don, yeah. yeah boy. And that, that year was a fascinating year. We had everything that could possibly go That was the rain wrong. year, too. It was, yeah, it was. Oh, God, we got flooded out when the hotel uh, they did. It. You're familiar with yeah. Town and Country? Mm -hmm. yeah. well, that's where it was held. But they didn't have, uh, they, they were fitting us in with another convention. Rotary was having a convention. So in order for us to have sufficient dance venues, we, we rented these two gigantic circus tents and set them up on the yeah. back parking lot. <laughs> and it rained. That was the year that the San Diego River overflowed. And it came up over the parking lot. And so... There's there's a little antidote in all of that. We we had some wonderful uh, people in the construction. Uh, Milton Kremitis, who was yeah. in, in the construction business, it built these platforms in which to put parquet floors on top of. And we rented the parquet floors from uh, Raff, Raff, Raffi's or Raphael's. 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 Well, we were uh, not much of an entity and had no economic you know substance to look at. So Rafi was very, they were very suspect about renting us all of this horrendous party yeah. floors. So I said, I'll tell you what, I'll give you the pink slip as a deposit on my oh Mercedes. My <laughs> and so he said, okay. <laughs> and so now the flood's coming. And the kids are around 5 o'clock oh, in the so morning. The floor's down. Oh, the floor's down. Everything is down. So about 5 o'clock in the morning, the kids are knocking on my bedroom door, and I get up, what's up? I gotta come here. Look. I get down to the tents and the floors are floating. <laughs> <laughs> so we get all the kids up and said, we need to move the parquet floor. I don't care about the rest of it. We got to get them up. Otherwise, I'm going to lose my car. So we, we, the kids unscrewed the floor and took it all out. And then Rotary was fantastic. They saw our dilemma. They squeezed themselves to give us space to continue our competition. Then the next thing that happens was there's a bomb scare. Same weekend? Same weekend. And I'm glad I wasn't there. So, so we go, oh, my God. And so Bill Collender, who was then chief of police of San Diego, is a good friend of mine, and we had sat on a couple of the boards. I put a call in asking to speak to him, and uh, finally he returns my call. And I said, Bill, there's been a, a bomb threat here at the hotel. What do I do? Can you guys bring your experts in and dogs or whatever? And he says, we can't do that. He says, you have to evacuate the entire facility. Yeah. I said, if I do that, we got 2,000 Greeks. They'll kill each other as they're running out of, <laughs> running out of the hotel. God. He says, either evacuate or he says, take your chances. He says, but he says, let me, let me check with our people to see if there's any substance. So I got a call back later on, and he said, we can't find any evidence of any of our sources that anybody would do this. So Anna Estetheo of, of blessed memory, yeah. uh, I grab Anna. Anna a, was a big, tall lady, and one of these very gregarious mm -hmm. women. So I said, I grab Anna. I says, come on, we're going to go talk to the bishop and tell him about the I'm scared. <laughs> so we, we go in and tell him, and he, he gets a panic. What are we going to do? I said, here's what you and I are going to do. We're going to sit in the front row at the stage. I said, if anything goes off, we're going to be the first ones to go. <laughs> and he, he looks at me and says, you really are crazy. I said, no, <laughs> that's what we're going to do. <laughs> so sure enough, we sit in the front row. Well, of course, there was no bomb. Nothing went off. But in the meantime, all of the kids in the management team, they had they were looking for anything. That looks well. People had anywhere there was an outlet charging their battery for their cameras. <laughs> and we, what is that there? Is it, what, unplugged. Oh, of oh yeah, yeah, it was it, it was what a, well that wasn't the end of the uh, that was that was incident number two. There was a third incident. We're now putting in scores in the computer. Oh God! And we have a power failure. 
everything in the hotel goes down. And we're sitting there saying, oh my God, yeah. did we lose all the records? And so now everybody is gathered because it's the banquet and it's all the reception. And I'm sitting there saying, Don and Ellie are in India and I'm here. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, Don wasn't there. No, they, oh, no, we were both there. Both we were both there. And so now the bishop, now people are getting antsy. And we're saying, well, you know, the scores will be out soon. The scores will be out soon. So now the bishop, God bless him, gets up to the podium and he starts singing Greek folk songs. Yeah. And pretty soon the audience is singing along with him. So that went on for at least an hour. Oh, my gosh. And then finally, they're telling me we're getting scores. <laughs> finally. Oh so we had three incidences that weekend. Oh, my that, God. I'm what, so glad I wasn't there. Yeah, that, that, was, that was the dividing line of everything <laughs> historically up to that point. And if we survived that, we yeah, knew from that point on there is nothing yeah. we could get in our oh, way. No. <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, one night. Yeah. yeah, one weekend. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. What, what's your... Maybe brightest memory of FBF. Oh gosh, it'd be so hard to to figure out. Okay. It's just, I don't know. It's just probably uh, after three days of no sleep and you know going on and on and how we could relax and yeah. maybe th two or three o'clock in the morning somebody's playing an instrument and we're sitting around and just. Yeah. Saying, well, it's, we made another year. Another year. <laughs> <laughs> we survived. <laughs> no, it's just I don't know. It's just that that feeling that you 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 we all got together and did it. Yeah. It so. it no question it gave you a an adrenaline rush. Oh boy. The weekend. Just, yeah. Yeah. You 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 didn't need drugs. You didn't need alcohol. It it was so inspiring that you. You didn't feel that you were tired. Yeah. But there was there was another element. After all, the competition would be over with. Mm -hmm. These guys would be working all day. In those day. days, we didn't have computers. You know, we were, I, we were sitting in our rooms oh. figuring out all the the scores. Don and I, we never went to, to sleep. Well. And then some some of the kids would stay up till all hours because after we got it all done, we posted it. You remember the postings? Oh my God! Yeah, they wanted to you know, know what, and then, where they, what rankings they were. Yeah, in. and then as soon as we got them done, it didn't matter what time of the night it was, they were posted in the hallway. Yeah, so, we we didn't start trying yeah. to convert this stuff into a computer until we were well into probably our fifth oh or sixth God. year. Yeah, you know, I used to go home the first through few years. I was up all night. Home at home, at home, figuring these things out. <laughs> so maybe I could really show up the next morning and and, well, and what post. What were the categories again? They were primary, advanced uh, primary. I mean, of the the judging criteria. Oh well, we that that changed. Yeah, I mean, we, and from year to year, we, you know, it might change uh, what they were looking for or how we were wording it, and most, right. you know, it's that that was a. It, that yeah. debate lasted for a good yeah, 10 it, years. Yeah, the debate's probably still going on. Yeah, probably. Know. Yeah. yeah. So. Because uh, you get this concept of somebody saying it's authentic. And yeah. There's and a problem with uh, when you say it's authentic because yeah. you don't have a picture of how yeah. it was danced 100 years and, ago. And, you know, depending on whether it was 20 years ago or now, how authentic is still authentic, but it's not the same, you know. Yeah, it's still not the same. So, you, yeah, it's very hard. Music is pretty constant. Oh, uh, yeah. That, that is, didn't seem oh, yeah. to change. Uh -uh. But, but dance steps can because it's, a, it's an art form. Yeah. And you could observe, for instance, a leader may add something uh, uh, that mm -hmm. may not normally be in the step, but that's his impression and in interpretation and all yeah. of a sudden maybe that step gets adopted by everybody yeah so it's it is subtle but it can happen so but the music doesn't change mm -hmm. yeah. but if i noticed that i've only been to fbf this past year but mm -hmm. if someone had recorded music versus live did that influence the judging? well, well it seemed like it might. it, it Probably didn't influence the judging too much, but it, you know, it was very well, it made a difference. Yeah. It really does. 
but uh, they they couldn't let it influence them too much, right. you know, as far as the actual judging of the dance. I wanted to ask both of you, I guess, um, to describe a word that I read quite a bit, keffy. Oh, keffy. It's just... It's just the feelings that you have, isn't that right? The happy, a happy oh, feeling. It's just a joyous. You uh, just thing. can't describe it. Yeah, There's it's not no, an no easy real, word to describe. But no way to describe it. Joyous, happy. Um, when you're dancing, don't be sad. Show show that you're enjoying the well, dance. Well, here's an illustration. Um, there was a, a big dance hall in Thessaloniki, and we used to go there and you know be all night long. And they would play maybe this one basic dance over and over and over again. It, it just seems like the whole dance floor was mesmerized. You know, you just do this one simple dance over and over and over. I can't even remember what the name of it was, but I, I could probably get out there and do it for you. But it's just, it's amazing. You know, and you're, hey, it's it. Kefi, you know, the whole whole dance floor is just, you know, that's that's what it was. It's just it's hard to tell. It's hard to say. Is anyone in your family involved in FDF now? Or? No, uh, my daughter was a very good dancer, but of course she got married and then children and so forth. My boys never took it up. They, they we we tried to take them a few times and they ah we don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> No, or or just, maybe we can just chalk it up that they were really smart. <laughs> we're not getting involved oh, no. in this. <laughs> uh, they, well, they were both uh, swimmers, and they were in uh, uh, one of them was in water polo and that kind of stuff. So they, they just d didn't care for the dancing, you know, yeah. as, as our type of dancing, yeah. uh, modern stuff. That's different. What other types of folk dancing did you do, or were you? Well, I taught international. I taught Ital uh, Bulgarian and Yugoslavian and Turkish and Israeli and Serbian. Serbian. Oh, I love the Yugoslavian dance. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and, and uh, you know, not not so much couple dancing like in Germany and Sweden and you know, not couple dancing. This is entirely different. It's you know, it's just everybody out on the floor together holding hands or whatever. And, uh, How did you first get interested in folk? Oh, uh, um, we were living up in Hayward, uh, uh, and uh, uh, Don was working in San Francisco, and one of the guys come over to him one day and said, uh, you know, my, my brother-in-law lives over in, in, uh, Hay in San Lorenzo, which is Next right door. by Hayward, yeah. and uh, he says this, this uh, Millie von Konsky from Oakland or someplace is going to come out and have a, fo uh, uh, you know, start a, dan a folk dance class. And, and my, my, sit my wife insists that I go. you got to come over and go with me, too. So then he, he told Don, you know, about it. And he says, you come on. <laughs> so the, the six of us went over that night and we started folk dancing. That's how it started with me. Um, Millie and Von, uh, von Konsky were well-known Serbian, uh, just international folk dancers, yeah, okay. just teaching everything, you know, up yeah. in that area. So, but then it grew, you know, and then we got into Greek and, and really like Greek dance and sort of focused in on it. This so. kind of off the, the subject, but you said mm -hmm. you really like Yugoslavian. Oh, I love Yugoslavian what? dance. Can you describe why? No, it's just a different, different music, and yeah. and uh, uh, basically, I think it's more. Uh, vigorous in a lot of the Greek dance, you know, it's not that Greek dance isn't in his way, but uh, it, it, I don't know, there's just a, a different feeling about it. Would, would you say, uh, uh, now here's an amateur's uh, observation, that some of the steps have a much more intricate Well, intricate quality. and faster, and, and bouncier, yeah. or whatever, yeah. and, uh, you know, Balkan, uh, uh, Bulgarian has another feel to it. I'd uh, Well, it just, I like dancing from all those countries. Yeah. Not so much Czechoslovakia, Poland, Hungary, they're more couple and more a uh, different type of dance, more mo the modern look of a dance. Modern look, not not uh, so much villagey stuff, yeah. you know. And that's a good way to distinguish it. Yeah. Village versus, say, right. a big city. Yeah, very much so. Uh, you, you'll see a very different yeah. uh, uh, perception. Can you think of any 
organization like FDF that's doing this to preserve Greek folk, or really any folk dance? Well, uh, well, the Irish are in a way. We, you know, uh, the uh, typical Irish dances. Mm -hmm. You know, I know there's. Uh, Groups that are very serious about that type of dance. The uh, uh, they're in their twentieth year of competition, yeah, by the way. Yeah. So they have they have started an Irish program of yeah. of uh, folk competition. And, and the uh, Yugoslavs, you know, they, we had St. George's and uh, you know in San Diego. San Diego yeah. I used to do a dance up there all the time. They have wonderful, you know, get-togethers, and I did. And for years, I did a lot of uh, artwork for them, just That's like right. I like did, did for St. Spirit. Saint Spirit yeah. Dance, yeah. Because they have a food in fact, festival as well. When they uh, they were doing some uh, mosaics in the uh, in the church for Saint or uh, Saint, Saint George. George's, and Father Marcus came over from the uh, from Belgrade where they have the the big central. Uh, I don't know what they call it right now. Headquarters. The uh, and uh, he he worked on the mosaics there, and he needed help, and I I worked with him for a while. I think I now remember yeah, that. Yeah. I'd forgotten that, yeah. but I do remember so. that. Yeah. That was very interesting. Yeah. yeah. Very was, interesting. Well, <laughs> I haven't done anything that's really great or, you know. No, that's not true. But uh, I uh, I did what was really interesting. Being a, a partner in the FDF, oh, boy, that was, that was yeah. the greatest blessing. Yeah. It would never have happened, frankly. Honestly, it would never have happened had it not been for Don and Ellie. Uh, they <clears throat> led the direction. They made the contacts that I would never have known. Uh, and even for those that they contacted that might have been apprehensive, they were great uh, great ambassadors to the concept. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, mm -hmm. no, it, it fortuitous, timing was perfect. Yeah. Again, as I said in the car, these things don't happen by accident. Mm -hmm. Uh, it, no, they haven't because they got somebody like Peter. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask. <laughs> he never quits. Never Peter. gives up. <laughs> oh, I just wanted um, you to comment about the Priolos family and their role in Oh, oh my we goodness. Gotta, we got to scratch that part. See, of I knew No, I've known these kids since they were <laughs> real young, you know. Yeah. Before you answer the yeah. question, I have to tell you my youngest son, Spiro, and oh. Tom. Same birthday. birthday. Same day, February 7th. And so there's a picture, there's a famous oh, picture. Famous Sparrow was seven years old, and in Don Don's had him arms. out at the night with him. Yeah. <laughs> and, and Don's arms. And yeah. so for a long time, Spiro really thought FDF was his birthday party. <laughs> <laughs> and it was really Don. Yeah. So, so both of them had the same yeah, day, oh, yeah. celebrated their birthday That's at great. FDF. <laughs> Go ahead, I didn't mean to interrupt you. You were going to make a comment. What are we doing? Uh, what was your question? Just that, that what Peter's oh, role Peter? in getting it started and leads. Well, I don't know. Just just Peter kept after us. <laughs> <laughs> so, come on, and then I got, I, of course, uh, Lisa and I worked together for years, and just yeah. I love sitting with her, and you know, uh, I don't know. See the kids grow up and mm -hmm. see them dance. And, yeah, it's just you know, we just had a good relationship. So. It was a unique and a beautiful relationship, and um, I'll say it again, I am ever so grateful Don and Ellie came into mm -hmm. our life. Well, I think a lot of people. And the, well, it changed our lives, changed theirs. Absolutely. You know, changed so. a lot of lives. Yeah. It was interesting, I, the last time I was at FDF, which was about five, six years ago, uh, I'm sitting in the audience and I'm seeing some young kids dancing. And then pretty soon I'm hearing some familiar voices in back of me. And I look back and I said, oh my God, uh, these were now grown adults who mm -hmm. danced very early on mm -hmm. in the festival. And I looked at them and I looked at the kid on the stage and I said, is that yours? Yeah. He said, yes, that's mm -hmm. ours. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it's an amazing feeling sure. when you, yeah. you remember yeah. kids who were dancing. Yeah, and their, their, kids, their are kids are dancing. And, yeah. So yeah. uh, we're now in, a, and we have some. We're in our third generation of dance. Yeah. So it's a, it's. And they can hardly wait to get them on the floor. We've oh. always had this really tiny group. They still have a, a young group. Yes, they yes. still do. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And that is amazing when you think of of teaching 
four or five year olds <clears throat> to dance. The concept of holding hands mm -hmm. and then listening to music and yeah, moving your yeah. feet and how some of these teachers managed to do that. We used to have some workshops how to teach little kids mm -hmm. to dance. And it's remarkable with some of these teachers, the, the creativity <laughs> of teaching <laughs> little kids to yeah. dance. Yeah. The Metropolitan Anthony's favorite thing of FDF. Well, you probably had several, yeah. but, but the one favorite <laughs> thing, right? we would gather all these little kids that would come out of there yeah. to dance, and we'd put them in a big circle yeah. around the stage. So after mm -hmm. the last little group dance, Anthony would get them all in a circle, yeah. and, all, and he'd lead them yeah. in a dance. Yeah. It, was, it, was, it, it was precious. He loved it. We have we have videos of that, so mm -hmm. we'll, we'll we'll edit edit some of that. Yeah. Yeah. Is there anything you would like to see in this video in particular that you think would be important to someone else we should talk to that you know of, or any part of photographic that oh, we should be sure we find? I'm sure. I I know we had some really very thorough, thorough cov coverage through the years. I, I just don't know what I would add, you know, that uh, I'm sure when you talk to the other judges, you're going to have a lot of interesting comments. Are you going to the next week meeting they're having down there? Mm -hmm. the, the, wish I could be there. It'd be wonderful. I wish but, you could too. Yeah. Oh, my. Uh, oh, really may, good. Well, maybe you know, about twice a year, uh, Ann Sirota, gets a group and they come up for the, uh, they have a big lunch at the Greek place and they sit around all afternoon. Um, uh, Stephanides, Nick yeah, Stephanides, uh, yeah. yeah, and uh, Ann Sirota and um, uh, Miller, uh, Dolly Miller, oh, Dolly. and, and oh, my gosh, oh uh, there's about five of them that come up. Oh, um, uh, Ann's husband, uh, Jerry Gavin. Yes. And, uh, they they get a car full and they come up. Oh, that's neat. Probably about twice uh, a year. It's really great. Maybe we'll, maybe next year, we'll, maybe we you and I will come and pick you up and we we'll go to FDF. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because people ask me if I'm yeah. ever going to go back to FDF. Yeah. I said, nah, I'm well, I went. Uh, we went back one year, but it's just not the same. Everybody's busy, busy, yeah. busy. Yeah, you know, and you same. just sort of feel left out of it. You know, like you're just. I mean, it's that's the it's not I the feel, same. I've stayed away. Because yeah, I know. Uh, it just. Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, it wouldn't be the same. But yeah, I'm trying to. My my granddaughters all want to go. Mm -hmm. Oh, of course. And, and um, the uh, we ha we're having a terrible time in getting the parents to send the kids to FDF. You're kidding. I just I won't. Oh be. my gosh! Um, I can't believe it. Yeah, they just don't understand the dynamics of the program. Well, they ought to. So Marilyn, you remember Marilyn? <laughs> well, yes, okay. of course. Marilyn has made it her mission now to uh, go talk to these parents and say, Good. Look it, yeah. because you don't know what you're missing. <laughs> and uh, and uh -oh. I'm, I've been threatening to get involved so mm -hmm. that I can see my grandkids well, go sure. over and dance. Oh, my gosh. But, um, I can't yeah. believe Sanasi and Maria. Well, they, are, they want to. They, uh, the, our grandkids did go to FDF this year, but they went under the comp choir competition. Oh, part. well, that's, yeah. That's and they won first place. They did? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, so that was good. So they, 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 now they've tasted FDF, they've seen it, and they want to go also and be dancers. Good. Well, I hope so. So we'll yeah. see. We'll work hard on the parents this year to see if we can't get them. That'll be the only way they're going to get me on yeah. FDF. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> well, I know what you mean. It, it's just, it's, no, it's different. Not, it's different. You know, it's it same. is. Yeah. So. What do you think they need to do to Keep it going. Keep, just what they're doing, I guess, because it seems to work every year. Yeah. You know, I just mm -hmm. yeah. They're they're doing all the right things. In my yeah. Opinion. It just seems like yeah, it's the um, well, the kids are so enthused that you know if they get asked to take an office, they take it and they do a great job and you know, mm -hmm. yeah, just and it's not easy. You, you gotta. Be there on, you know, you have to have everything going just so, so, so. You don't want anything to, you know, make a mistake on anything, running yeah. it through. It's, yeah, it's, um, 
the 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 good thing is that we and I don't think it's a failure, it's just that we 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 had we put so much energy into the creation of the program mm -hmm. in terms of process, procedures, mm -hmm. goals, so that as Ellie said, you 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 needed to be very conscious of details. Uh, that we oh, did. the details. One year we had the the big uh, final dinner, you know. Oh yeah. And you had somebody, a couple of people were going to head it, and they they expected to, hit, you know, the morning before the con the uh, dinner, they decided they better get it all organized or something. <laughs> And we got in there, and we, and Lisa, you know, that, that was one of those all-nighters at your office. Right. Trying to figure out the, who was going to sit where and everything, all the tables. and uh, yeah, Somebody dropped the ball. Somebody, well, somebody that, you know, took over the job just un didn't understand what they were supposed to be doing. It, uh, boy, we, I think we were all in a tizzy that night. When you're sitting That's, two to uh, 3,000 people down yeah, for dinner. Yeah, yeah. You really got to pay attention. And you have to have certain people at the head tables and, yeah. and oh boy. So, uh, so what we didn't were able to really do is to go out and promote what the current generation of leadership is doing, and we think this is a, they're doing a great job, mm -hmm. is people with money to buy ads mm -hmm. uh, to ensure the financial integrity of the program. And so I, my hat's off to the, the current leadership in, in, uh, in that regard. Mm -hmm. They're doing a great job. And, uh, and as, as, we, as Ellie and I were looking at the book a few minutes ago that they did this year, this is a really a quality yeah. piece. Beautiful book, yeah. Uh, and not, not inexpensive. But, and yet, mm -hmm. on the other hand, the good news is that they've got people who think enough of the program and right. are willing to put up money. Mm -hmm. and, and that... As long as they keep that in balance and can continue to mm -hmm. do that, this program will go on for a long time. Yeah. It, in uh, what year were we in Seattle? Do you remember? Oh, I don't remember what year. Do you that remember, was? Nick? Uh, Ninety-one. Ninety-one. Uh, no, no. Ninety. Ninety-nine. Yeah. Ninety. A Mary Curris, oh, who you will get a chance to interview. A phenomenal lady. Oh yes. Uh, just, just a, a tremendous woman said, you know, programs like this have a lifespan of about 15, 18 years. We kept saying that all through yeah. the years. She yeah. says, 15 years yeah. is going to be it. And <laughs> that, that was like telling me, Peter, you're going to dig in your heels because <laughs> that ain't going to happen. But she's right. Yeah. Uh, my, my nephews and nieces were in, uh, in high school band. And in Southern California, in Long Beach every year, we had the Western Regional Band Competition where 10,000 high school kids would come from all over and there would be a huge parade up Ocean Boulevard and ending up in the, th those years, the old convention mm -hmm. center. And they had a terrific competition and there was awards and they had uh, what they called a sweepstakes. You know, the, our sweepstakes, I, we didn't create it, I, that, I borrowed it from the mm -hmm. Western Regional Band Competition. <laughs> And that mm -hmm. band was the, the all-over champion the previous year, so they'd come and they would get to put on a big performance once everybody got into the convention center. And they also published a newspaper. So again, that idea wasn't new to us. I said, that was a good idea. We should do the same thing. <laughs> so, uh, but that lasted 18 years. Yeah. And when I, when, I, when I realized that it collapsed, it stopped, I went back and what happened was it was the same people, same families, year after year after year after yeah. year. They got burned out, and there was sure. no succession. There's no, uh -uh. We have succession. Yes, yeah, we have Don, new Elliot, kids coming and, in all and the time. I, my wife, oh, yeah. and a few. Yes, we were involved, but every year we, there was yeah. new blood coming in, being sure. trained. So that's why the program is succeeding. We let the younger people, you know, do a lot, everything we could, I think, to yeah. take care of it. Yeah. You know, we were just in the background. And, well, they've taken yeah. ownership, and they're doing a great, and as yeah, I said, they're doing a great job. Yeah. But that's why the program is able mm -hmm. to su sustain itself. It, it, where the Western Regional Band, which is a tragedy, because if you'd ever gone to see mm -hmm. 10,000 kids in their uniforms yeah. marching up Ocean Boulevard in Long Beach, and, and you saw more yellow school buses <laughs> than you've ever seen in your life who transported mm -hmm. the kids to Long Beach, 
It was a, it was a marvelous experience. And it's, today it's sad that doesn't exist. It's just sad. What else are we going to say? I don't know. Nothing. It is really great seeing you. I know. I am sad our buddy is not here. Yeah. And I know he's here in spirit, but uh, I, I just, I should have done this when I first started talking about it. Yeah. Okay. But anyway. Uh, do we have a picture of Don anywhere? Oh, yes, I could probably get one. Why don't we get a picture of Milk Stone? Uh, 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 Ellie and I was, I was just saying to Ellie how sad mm -hmm. I am that Don is not with us. I don't know if you can pick up a picture of Don. But I've got but, some bigger ones. I just but, uh, can't put my hand in. The, uh, but Don is, I know Don is with us in spirit, but he was a great partner in, in this venture, and the two of them together were an incredible partnership. <laughs> We were married 66 years. 66. Oh, yeah. We oh. just finished 48. Hmm? We just huh? we just finished 48. 48. And she's still married to me. That's, <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> what was Don's profession? Uh, he was um, uh, with the uh, state compensation or workman's comp, oh. you know, and uh, he was district manager in in Ventura, uh, Ventura and Santa Barbara counties, and then we went to San Diego. Uh, he was uh, San Diego and Imperial County mm -hmm. uh, district manager. And were you working outside? Uh, never anything like I said. I just you know you had, a, been running had, a, like. <laughs> had a job here and there. And I did so much volunteering. I didn't have time to work. <laughs> That's right. She raised three great yeah, kids and yeah. uh, kept Don in line and. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> No, we had a good time.